Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Sunday, Microsoft held its annual Xbox E3 briefing. Many fans met the show with mixed reactions, although we did get some gems like Halo and Gears, but not any gameplay. We did get a few new IPs, but after the show was done, I and many just wanted more. The Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is a great value and was an awesome announcement, and the introductory beta price of $1 is simply amazing. Now, if you have Game Pass or Xbox Lifetime remaining, it merges into Game Pass Ultimate. When I upgrade my services it gave me until mid 2021. Now they also announced the Elite Controller 2 and this is a welcome change over the original. Now the original version a lot of people had some problems with the build quality. The build quality on the second version is much better. You also have three profiles that you can attach to the controller to switch in any game of your choosing. Also there's a new configuration for the triggers at the back. You can adjust them to your liking for first person shooters. Now I thought the show overall was kind of subpar. I gave it a 6 out of 10 and there are many reviews of the Microsoft show on YouTube. Today however I want to take a look at Microsoft's next generation Xbox Project Scarlet. Now Microsoft announced that they have a custom designed Zen 2 and Navi APU and that it will be 4 times more powerful than the Xbox One X with high bandwidth GDDR6 memory and up to 120 frames per second. It will also have 8K capability, free sync and next gen ray tracing done with hardware acceleration. Now the SSD will be used as virtual RAM and you will get 40 times performance increase over current gen and that is for your loading times. Now Microsoft's next generation console ticks all the boxes. With the claim of 120 frames per second, I believe it's safe to assume that 60 frames per second will not be an issue. Zen 2 is light years ahead of the CPU and current gen consoles and Navi is also using a new architecture dubbed RDNA. We can only compare teraflops with the same architecture, so for example a 9 teraflop Vega GPU is not comparable to a 9 teraflop Navi GPU. Because of the new instructions and compute abilities, Navi should perform greater than Vega. Now the SSD as a virtual RAM should just about eliminate load times. FreeSync 8K and 120 frames per second tells me that Xbox Scarlet is HDMI 2.1 compliant. 4 times more powerful than the Xbox One X is a bold claim. However, Microsoft was dead on with the Xbox One X specs a year ahead of launch, so I'm going to take them at their word on this. Now, I want to clarify on the 40 time performance increase over the current gen systems. This is for your loading times. The four times more powerful claim than the Xbox One X, I believe this is system wide. This includes the CPU, the GDR6 RAM, bandwidth, clock speeds, and CPU power. Microsoft's next gen devices will be a general generational leap, especially with next gen real time ray tracing that is hardware accelerated. This was confirmed by Microsoft on the E3 stage. From what we know so far, Microsoft's next gen Xbox is shaping up to be the most impressive console we've ever seen yet. Microsoft announced Xbox Scarlet release date as holiday 2020, so next gen officially starts next year. There are some rumors circulating that AMD will talk about the next generation Xbox at its E3 press conference today. AMD will finally launch Navi and Zen 2, giving us a much clearer picture of Navi's capabilities. I would like to know what you think of Xbox Next Generation Console. Did you enjoy the Xbox press conference and are you looking forward to the next generation consoles? Personally, I can't wait for the next generation of consoles. 60 frames per second looks like it will be the norm and this is a welcome change for console gamers. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think so please leave your comments in the section down below and like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.